Sarah Lucas's violation of the boundaries between flesh and food, self and other, can also be interpreted using the theories of the grotesque and the abject. The grotesque can be traced back to the walls of Roman grottos, where artists created highly ornamental frescoes depicting griffins, satyrs and centaurs. Over time, the word grotesque came to be associated with that which is distasteful, abhorrent or ugly. These judgments apply to the discomfort we feel when normal boundaries of decency are crossed and the natural order is overturned. As art historian Francis Connolly puts it, the grotesque is defined by what it does to boundaries, transgressing, merging, overflowing, destabilizing them. Put more bluntly, the grotesque is a boundary creature. In her influential 1982 essay, Powers of Horror, Julia Kristeva developed the term abject to explore the human reaction to the fragmented, decayed or impure human body. The abject has to do with what disturbs identity, system, order, what does not respect borders, positions, rules. Abject theory applies to works that deal with functions or aspects of the body that are considered impure or taboo, like wounds, illness, bodily fluids, and especially death. According to Christopher, the abject refers to the horror felt in response to a threatened breakdown in meaning caused by the loss of boundaries between self and other, the loss of a sense of self. The primary example for what causes such a reaction is the corpse, which traumatically reminds us of our own eventual death. As Christopher puts it, the corpse, seen without God and outside of science, is the utmost of abjection. It is death infecting life, abject. However, other items can elicit the same reaction the open wound, faeces, sewerage, even the skin that forms on the surface of warm milk. When the eyes see or the lips touch that skin on the surface of milk, harmless, thin as a sheet of cigarette paper, pitiful as a nail paring, I experience a gagging sensation, and still farther down, spasms in the stomach, the belly, and all the organs shrivel up the body, provoke tears and bile, increase heartbeat, cause forehead and hands to perspire. For Christeva, the abject is closely tied to both religion and to art, which she sees as two ways of purifying the abject. The various means of purifying the abject, the various catharses, make up the history of religions and end up with that catharsis par excellence called art, both on the far and near side of religion. Christopher follows Freud in her belief that repressed desires tend to manifest themselves unconsciously and symbolically. This can happen occasionally in something like the slip of the tongue, the so-called Freudian slip, but it also happens in art. As a vessel for investigating the abject, Art is the only escape against the repression of religion and political systems. These theories, which are key to discussing contemporary art, share a focus on impurity, border states and hybridisation. Art in this vein involves breaching culturally enshrined boundaries like life and death, good and evil, spirit and flesh, creation and destruction, human and animal, and organic and inorganic matter. Works that express these qualities have a long and impressive lineage. Hieronymus Bosch, famous for the fantastic and disturbing detail of his panel pictures, developed an original and often macabre language of visual symbolism. Bosch's most famous work is perhaps The Garden of Earthly Delights. In the 17th century, Van Mander wrote, Who will be able to tell of all of the weird and strange ideas which were in the mind of Hieronymus Bosch and his expressions of them, by his brush, he painted gruesome pictures. The Triumph of Death illustrates the influence of Hieronymus Bosch on Peter Bruegel the Elder's work. This painting brutally depicts many types of people being indiscriminately taken by death. Skeletons are murdering hundreds of people, everyone from peasants to nobles and from children to the king. 
none are spared their fate at the hands of death. Saturn Devouring His Son is one of the works by Francisco Goya that falls within his black paintings. Some believe that Goya was so disillusioned by the political unrest of his beloved Spain that he felt the need to express his resentment through his art, with Spain being the sun and the oppressors being Saturn. Others believe the painting is a twisted representation of his relationship with his own sons. Regardless of the motive behind it, Saturn devouring his son is a disturbing portrayal of conflict, fear and the bloodlust that can accompany the lust for power. 19th century romantic artist Theodore Jericho portrayed in horrifying explicitness scenes of a shipwreck based on a contemporary event in which the captain had deserted his crew and passengers, leaving them to die. The painting's allusions to governmental negligence and corruption ignited great controversy and brought Jericho widespread attention.